The following program contains shocking assertions of truth. If you suffer from relativism, Randall may not be right for you. Check with your local guru. Standing for truth in the four corners of America. Fighting for justice on the frontiers of the culture wars. And turning resistance into an art form. Randall Terry. Did you know that the Pilgrims had an experiment in communism? How do you think it went? It's a good thing the Indians came to the party, or there would have been a lot of hungry people. Most people know that the NSA is reading our emails and listening to our phone conversations. What people don't know is that traitors can also read your mind. Don't be a blistering idiot. Get your aluminum foil helmet today free at my website with the purchase of our premium pocket protectors. Premium pocket protectors. Welcome to this special Thanksgiving Day broadcast, and we're going to run it again on Friday night. I hope that you have a lovely weekend with your family. We are broadcasting from our temporary studios in Memphis, Tennessee. We are here because one of our sons, Michael Winston Theodore Terry, is being treated for acute lymphoblastic lymphoma, which is a blood-borne cancer. He is being treated at St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And I ask you to please continue to pray for him and for his healing and for my family and our staff as we try and get settled here for his care. All right, I ha I've learned some really disturbing things in my research for this show. For example, pumpkin pie, it's not American. The turkey was barely even a part of the feast. I mean, these big 20 pound turkeys that you can buy in the store, a big turkey in those days was eight pounds. So what they were eating was venison. They were eating a lot of seafood. They didn't have any apple pie. They did not even have pies at the first Thanksgiving Day feast because they'd run out of sugar. This is an outrage. All right, I, I, all kidding aside, Macy's Day, family feasts, it's, it's all fun, football games. Most of us look forward to it. Some of us, it can be a little bit painful because of the loss of loved ones or family crises, but overall, it can be a, a blessed holiday. I'm gonna talk to you about the history behind Thanksgiving because it's so critical. And the lessons that we can learn, good and bad, that we can apply to ourselves today. For example, obviously, they celebrated Thanksgiving, but what led up to it? And what lessons can we learn from what led up to it? The separatists, as they were called, were Christians in England that did not want to be forced to participate in the life of the Church of England. They separated themselves. They wanted the Bible to be the centerpiece of their worship, not creeds, not bishops. And they were fiercely persecuted because of this. They went to Holland, a couple hundred of them went to Holland, to escape the persecution and to try and develop a community there. Well, the, the ones that were there, many of them began to be worried because of the influence of the Dutch on their children. Their children started to lose their faith. Their children started to become secularized and worldly. And this greatly disturbed the moms and dads whose, who, who the centerpiece of their life was their faith. So they came back to England and got permission from King James, the King James of the King James Bible, to come here to America and to start a colony. Two ships started, the Mayflower and the Speedwell. The Speedwell started to leak almost immediately, so they had to go back to England. They took the passengers on board, and most record that 102 people set sail for the New World. It was a horrible voyage. 
because they sailed during the fiercest times of storms because they had the delay. And when they got here, it was too late in the season for them to actually establish a colony, so they had to spend the winter on the boat. By the time spring came, half of the people who left England were dead. They were dead, literally. I want to point two things out. One, they left England originally so that they could practice their Christian faith without persecution. And two, they came to America for the sake of their children so that they could raise their children in the, in the faith as they understood it, free of persecution and oppression. Now I want you to think of what we do and we don't do today. Would you put your family on a boat knowing that there was a fairly good chance that you would be drowned at sea? And it was common in those days for a ship to set sail and never be heard from again. They risked their lives. When we get upset, we go to another church. We stop going to church altogether. They risked their lives to come here for religious liberty and for their children. Think of the cost to them. And then think, what am I doing for my kids so that they keep their faith? so that they're not secularized, so that they're not influenced by the world. I mean, really and truly, is it that difficult for us to quarrel with them over an iPad or over an Assassin's Creed video game or to make sure that they attend church regularly and learn the faith? Really and truly, we have a lot to learn from the people who gave us the, thir the first Thanksgiving. When we come back, I'm going to look at the Mayflower Compact and I'm going to look at their incredible experiment in communism done in the name of God. That's some crazy stuff right there. You know what I'm saying? How can you do something in the name of God that is against God? That doesn't make no sense to me. Every day in America, over 3,500 babies are torn apart by abortion. Shouldn't all babies like this living unborn child have the right to life? Baby killing will only end when Americans see the truth of what abortion does to innocent children. You can help end this Holocaust by showing the truth of abortion in your area with a Face the Truth tour. Go to facethetruthamerica.com to set up a Face the Truth tour in your area. The babies and their mothers will be eternally grateful. How would you like to be able to reach hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of potential customers with your product or your company? or your web-based business. Well, you can do that right here on this show. Every single day, we get phone calls or letters or orders online from states all over the country where people are watching this television show. Right now, we are seen in 45 cities at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time every night and then a rerun again at 12.30 midnight. You can reach them using this show at advertising rates that are so inexpensive, it would blow your mind. So, if you're interested, contact us at the phone number that you see on the screen or the email address, and we can talk about how you can grow your business and help support this show. You know something else that really disturbs me? You hear all this history about Plymouth Colony and the Mayflower Compact and all these things, but the oldest settlement was a, a bunch of papists in St. Augustine, Florida. Yeah, they got here first and have the longest running community in America. It's not the Northeast. Oh, the truth just bugs me. Anyway, um, the Mayflower Compact. It is our nation's first governing document, all right? So it's, it's actually, unless of course the people in St. Augustine had one that I don't know about. Um, the, the Mayflower Compact is a great document in its brevity, its mission, its spirit. Let's read it together. In the name of God, amen. We whose names are underwritten, the loyal subjects of our dread sovereign Lord, King James, by the grace of God, 
of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, King, Defender of the Faith, etc., have, having undertaken for the glory of God and advancement of the Christian faith. To, hold on a second. I, I feel like I'm, I'm reading some religious document. Where is the ACLU when you need them? I'm offended. The advancement of the Christian faith? How about the advancement of no faith? The advancement of other faiths? How about Buddhism? Confucianism? Islamism? Mohammedanism? Zoroastrianism. All right, I'll stop. The, the, the truth of the matter is that the first political document of the original 13 colonies was inherently theocentric, Christocentric, for the advancement of the Christian faith. Eat your heart out, ACLU. Having undertaken for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith in honor of our king and country, a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia, do by these presents solemnly and mutually in the presence of God and one another, covenant and combine ourselves together into a civil body politic for our better ordering and preservation and furtherance of the ends aforesaid, and by virtue hereof to enact, constitute, and frame such just and equal laws, ordinances, acts, constitutions, and offices from time to time, as shall be thought most meet, that means most proper, most meet and convenient for the general good of the colony, unto which we promise all due submission and obedience. In witness whereof we have here under subscribed our names at Cape Cod, the 11th of November, new style, November 21st, in the year of the reign of our sovereign lord king james of england france and ireland the 18th and of scotland the 54th in the year of our lord 1620. now what i want to point out to you and i'll bear in on this in the next segment is that this document is done in the name of god in the presence of god for the advancement of the christian faith right and then they say all right we're going to agree to certain rules and laws, and we also agree to obey them. Well, one of the first things that they did, these people who loved God, who risked their lives to come here to practice their faith, who came here to raise their children in their faith, one of the first things they did was they committed themselves to communism. They committed themselves that no one could hold private property. We're going to look at the result of it. Now, I want you to just stop and think about this. Good people, God-fearing people, people who risked their lives to come here so that they could practice Christianity freely and so that they could keep their children in the faith, started off with a huge error in judgment and actually tried to impose on people something that was ungodly. When we come back, I'm gonna let William Bradford, the governor at that time, tell you in his own words what a disaster it was. Is anybody listening when it comes to Obamacare? Do you want to have knowledge, wisdom, discernment? If so, you have to read good books, theology, history, books that look at the lives of great men and women. So to help you to become a more effective Christian, a better witness for truth, somebody who can engage in productive conversation that exhorts and edifies those that you speak with, we're gonna do something crazy. We're offering you these seven books for a gift of any size. You just pay for the shipping and handling, and then give whatever gift that you can, and we will send them to you. But just to make it a little bit more crazy, I will send you a second copy of my three books, autographed. You can give them as a gift to your pastor or to a family member and help extend truth and justice in the world. This is While Supplies Last. From some men, you learn what to do. From some men, you learn what not to do. 
and from some you learn both. And the same goes for women. There are things that we can learn from the pilgrims as we celebrate this Thanksgiving weekend that are good things. And there are some mistakes that they made that we can learn from. As I mentioned before the break, when they signed the Mayflower Compact, they landed, they tried to build their little community. They said everyone was going to hold all things in common. Everything. All work was going to be in common. It proved a disaster. People were starving, literally. And so <clears throat> Governor Bradford got together with some of the elders of the community and they had some long and very intense discussions. And they decided that they were going to allow families to own property and plant their own corn and get their own harvests to take care of their family because everyone was starving anyway. I'm going to let him speak for himself. Now, on TV, people say it's not a good idea to read a long passage. And normally, I agree. But some things are so good that they deserve a full hearing. So read along on your screen. I'll interrupt myself, make a comment here and there. This is what happened after they said, you can go ahead and have property and plant your own corn and take care of your own family instead of everyone doing it together in a communal communist manner. This was very successful. All made, it made all hands very industrious so that much more corn was planted than otherwise would have been by any means the governor or any other could devise and saved him a great deal of trouble and gave far better satisfaction. The women now went willingly into the field and took their little ones with them to plant corn, while before they would allege weakness and inability and to have compelled them would have been thought great tyranny and oppression. The failure of the experiment of communal service, which was tried for several years and by good and honest men. Now, think about this. They gave us the Mayflower Compact. They loved God. They feared God. They risked their lives to serve God in this howling wilderness and to raise their children in the faith. Well, what they understood was that the faith was more than just believing in the Trinity and when you're baptized and the scriptures being inspired by God, etc. That the Christian faith and the laws of God actually apply to six days shalt thou labor and the seventh day rest. You shall not covet your neighbor's goods. If everything is in communal ownership, you can't covet anything that anyone else has because everyone owns it all and nobody owns anything. Do you understand that parts, elements of the laws of God in Mosaic, great, in the Mosaic law in great detail in Exodus and Leviticus and Deuteronomy deals with private ownership of property, of real estate, of items. I continue. The failure of the experiment by good and honest men proves the emptiness of the theory of Plato and other ancients applauded by some of later times that the taking away of private property and the possession of it in community by a commonwealth would make a state happy and flourishing as if they were wiser than God. See, what happened was the pilgrims realized that they thought they were wiser than God. Do you understand, friends, that God actually has laid out certain things about property ownership? You can't even lose your property under biblical law to bankruptcy. It's held by your debtor, or the person who holds your debt for a number of years, and then reverts back to your family. The private possession of real estate is central to Mosaic law regarding liberty. I continue. For in this instance, community of property, so far as it went, was found to breed much confusion and discontent and retard, that means slow down, much employment, which would have been to the general benefit and comfort. For the young men who were most able and fit for service objected to being forced to spend their time and strength in working for other men's wives and children without any recompense. I'm not trying to be unkind, but don't you see how this is exactly what's happening today? People are working hard and they're not retaining the fruit of their labor. It's being given to other people. They tried it. It failed, and it's going to fail again now. I'm going to take a quick break, and I'm going to read the rest of what he said, 
and make a couple more comments about this Thanksgiving. I hope that you're enjoying this. You're going to be smarter when it's over, if nothing else. Mabel, do I look smarter to you? Do you want to get America out of the hands of wicked and unjust men and women who are destroying the republic before our eyes and put leadership back into the hands of righteous men and women so that we don't die as a nation? Well, you're talking about social revolution and there are rules in social revolution. We can look at the victorious social revolutions of the past, such as the end of slavery, the end of child labor, women's voting rights, the end of segregation, and so much more, and learn from their victories. Look at their actions, their images, their rhetoric, their sacrifices, and their final fruit. We will send you this series that originally cost $129, seven books for students, one teacher's guide, if you'll give a gift of any size and just pay for shipping and handling. Take advantage of it today. I hope that you're enjoying this show and I hope that you're having a blessed Thanksgiving weekend with your family. I'm reading the words of Governor Bradford when he confessed to the world, and thank God we have it, that the, that the pilgrims failed, that their plan for communism failed. And they started it in the name of God for the advancement of the Christian faith. Guess what? Communism doesn't work so well for the advancement of the Christian faith. Let me continue reading while we've got a couple minutes left. He said, the strong man or the resourceful man had no more share of food, clothes, etc., than the weak man who was not able to do a quarter the other could. This was thought injustice. The aged and graver men who were ranked and equalized in labor, food, clothes, etc., with the humbler and younger ones thought it some indignity and disrespect to them. As for men's wives who were obliged to do service for other men, such as cooking, washing their clothes, etc., they considered it a kind of slavery. Well, guess what? It was a kind of slavery. And many husbands would not brook it. Men finally said, we're done with this. My wife is not coming over to wash your clothes and cook your meals. The end. Do it yourself. Hire somebody to do it. But it's not happening anymore. He said, this feature of, of it would have been worse still if they, had, if they had not been men of an inferior class. It was thought all were to share alike and all were to do alike. Folks, this is communism. This is the stuff that Karl Marx said, only they were writing it before Karl Marx was even born because it came from some ancient Greek philosophers, okay? It was nonsense with the Greeks. It was nonsense with the pilgrims. It was nonsense with Karl Marx, and it's nonsense today. Only it's not just nonsense. It's tyranny and oppression and theft and greed and covetousness. I'm on a roll here. Um, and one was thought as good as another. And so, if it did not actually abolish those very revelations which God himself has set among men, all right, he's saying, look, this was coming close to defying the laws of God. It did at least greatly diminish the mutual respect that it is so important should be preserved amongst them. Let none argue that this is due to human failing rather than to this communistic plan of life in itself. He said, look, it was the communistic plan that was the failure. We all feared God. We made an agreement in the Mayflower Compact. It wasn't human weakness. They were made of stern stuff, people. They risked their lives to come here, okay? They were made of stern stuff. But the communistic plan was inherently flawed, inherently evil and doomed to failure from the beginning. So, let's add this up and ponder it for ourselves. What are we willing to do and to risk for our Christian faith? What are we willing to do? What sacrifices will we make? What risks will we take to keep our children in the faith? And will we see that the communistic plan itself that is being pushed on us from so many angles, from commerce to healthcare, is an inherently flawed plan and it is bound to fail. And then, what will we do to extricate ourselves from this mess? Happy Thanksgiving. It is our duty 
and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Amen.